and yeah, you gotta you gotta invest in the in the conditions that you're you're given, right? The the right price is the is the last price uh, that the market gives you. So, uh, just investing in these pie in the sky scenarios is is not necessarily a way to go about it. As a leader in uranium discovery in Argentina, Blue Sky Uranium is focused on advancing a rapidly growing portfolio of uranium vanadium projects into low cost production while respecting the environment, communities, and cultures in which they work. Welcome back to Inside the Markets, flagship podcast of stockpulse.com. And- Join me today. Once again, I've got Nick Hodge here from Digest Publishing. He also puts the Daily Profit Cycle newsletter out, uh, and always good to catch up with you. I'm going to see you at the Silver Symposium here in a few weeks in Spokane. So, uh, Nick, I appreciate you taking the time. Rob, it's always good to be on the show. Uh, the show, uh, the conference is right in my backyard, so I'm looking forward to it. In fact, I was up at uh, the casino this past week checking out Dwight Yoakam with my wife. So um, looking forward to, to being back there here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, f- fantastic venue and uh, airport friendly for those uh, um, who are flying in. So, yeah, I guess uh, I guess let's start here. Um, um, I guess big picture, pull back a little bit here. Uh, um, all kinds of things going on, I guess, but uh, a little strength back in the metals here after a, a real uh, ugly start to the summer here. I know a lot of charts look uh, look pretty horrid, but the work goes on. These juniors are trying, I guess, uh, pull back and what's Nick Hodge see the, the big picture looking like here in the economy. Yeah, it's been a tough uh, summer for sure. I think you've got a recession that is now uh, taking hold of the economy. Uh, we don't have to go over the definition of that or, or try to move the goal the goalposts to that. I think everybody feels it. Um, I think everybody feels the inflation as well. And um, I think you, you you get a, a further pullback in stocks. You know, the the S and P was down something like uh, 20, 22 percent in in June year to date. I'm talking about and is sort of. Um, ripped higher in, in July and early August here it has people thinking that the the bottom is in. I'm not so sure. I don't see a lot of earning strength uh, out there, and I see a, a bit of recession and 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 weak stocks lasting for a couple more quarters, perhaps into um, early 2023. Um, but it's not all bad news for the metals. I think um, you've got people coming back to their desk. You might see a bump here uh, late in the year, but um, to get a little pessimistic again, I think you're going to have a pretty nasty nasty tax loss selling season. Like you said, some of the charts already don't look great. And I think you'll see some tax loss harvesting that um, brings some of these junior resource companies down to very attractive entry points. Um, The other thing I'll say on the macro level as as it relates to recession is that, um, you know, silver and gold sort of looking, uh, at least on the chart, like you know, early 2008 to me, and you remember that they crashed along with stocks into um, late 2008, but then they came rip roaring out of the backside of that recession in, in 2010 and, and 2011. I think we're setting up for um, that sort of setup now where you, you get a washout, one final washout uh late 2022, early 2023, and then uh, you're off to the races for the resource market. You can sort of uh, see that if you look at some non-precious metals, like if you look at the energy metals, lithium holding up really well, uh, critical elements, rare earth stocks, things like that are are doing pretty good. And and if you look at companies, and I know we're going to get into some individual companies, but if you look at companies that are delivering results with the drill bit, they are being rewarded. So um, it's not all doomy and gloomy out there. Yeah, um, well, that's uh, that's good to know. And uh, um, yeah, I guess let's uh, let's let's kind of get into that here. Uh, let's start off here with uh, I know one of probably your favorites here, uh, Hecla made a move on Alexco here. I I thought they probably got the better end of that deal, but but maybe not. I guess uh, well, let's hear it from you. Who won in that one? Well, no, I think uh, Hecla has made a, a smart acquisition. You know, uh, expanding their reach in that jurisdiction. Really, I, I view Hecla as a, as a proxy for silver prices, not necessarily because of the the deals they make or even the individual assets they own. But I think it's one of the the true proxies for silver uh, prices, and it also pays that little kicker dividend. So, you know, when I'm getting all bulled up on silver, or conversely, when um, you know I think silver's going to go down, I think Hecla is a great trading vehicle. So um, we were just in it. In fact, uh, took some profits on it in, in my in monthly letter, which is called Foundational Profits. And um, we were able to make 15% in, in not that long of a, of a time period. So I like Hecla because it's a, it's a highly liquid vehicle that allows you to get um, in and out uh, well quickly if you want to, as opposed to some of these uh, juniors, which are very illiquid and you can't necessarily trade them. 
Yeah, you mentioned uh, um, the drill bit rewarding companies. So you've got a, a couple out there that are, uh, or at least another one I know that's uh, that's drilling. So I guess I uh, get into who you're going to be talking to at the symposium here, and I guess we can talk about kind of some of the information that you're going to be um, um, putting to investors here uh, to help combat inflation. And and, and I guess uh, as a third question here, uh, how do you see inflation going? Yeah, um, inflation is going to be sticky. It's going to be with us here for a while. You know, it might not be a 9% number like we saw in July, but 8% inflation is certainly still high. And I think it comes in in that uh, 8% range. We'll get the July number here on August 10th. Uh, I'm not sure when this video is going to be out, but I think you sort of get that, you know, 7 to 9% inflation for a couple of more quarters here. And that's really impacting the consumer, which is why I said that this recession could last a, a little bit longer. As far as individual companies, I mean, that's what's great about conference. Conferences, right, is is walking the floor and, and getting the face to face time, getting the things you can't get from uh, online video or from press release, and, and and talking to the people who really know what's going on with the companies. So, I mean, too quickly, just to scan in your list of exhibitors that I am a personal shareholder of, and that also are um, sponsors of my website, Resource Doc Digest. First one is uh, Sterling. Um, sterling metals, which is drilling now in in Newfoundland, right? They're they're onto a, a pretty hot. It's really a polymetallic discovery, but uh, they're calling it a silver story. They've got drills turning right now. Uh, they're cashed up. I helped them raise a bit of money earlier in the year, and I'm excited to see um, what the drills turn up there. You know, they're chasing um, veins. They think it's a, a, a string of pearls type theory they've got going on, and I'm pretty excited about uh, what they're going to turn up. And so I'll be asking uh, Matt Wilson. Uh, you know how drill how drilling's going what the core is looking like what when can we expect results those types of questions um and then the other one which isn't a primary silver company in fact there's there's no silver on their property at all but they'll be at your show is revival gold um you know they're on to a five million ounce uh, four million ounce resource but there's easily five million ounces there they've got a rig turning in idaho right now as well and um, you know, that's the the former largest past producing gold mine in Idaho. It's uh, several tens of millions of dollars in infrastructure that's already there, uh, high power. Uh, electric line going through site and uh, at the end of the drill season last year uh, that came out in December 2021 was some really um, high grade hits that they found below the the open pit so they're looking at now like an underground scenario I mean they're hitting uh, multiple meters of like 12 to 15 gram gold for example and that's the the result that they're chasing up now um, in fact I was talking to CEO Hugh Agro here recently and they've got the first two holes completed so I would expect some um, results to come out if not by the silver symposium certainly by like the middle of, of September, Beaver Creek style. So uh, those are two I'm excited to, to talk to, and I'll be asking him some of those similar questions, right? What does the core look like? Are you able to get another rig? Um, you know, uh, what's financing look like for the next couple of months? Are you interested in bringing in a strategic? I mean, that's a big project that um, is probably ready for a, a strategic to come in on. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, I guess fast forward here and uh, maybe give a, a vibe, a little forecast to the sector here. Um, you mentioned times are tough here. Uh, our financing is getting done. What, what does it take to 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 raise money here at a at a level that doesn't hurt the company? Financings are getting done. Um, some I've seen have had to sort of lower the price um, or taking longer to close, but they are getting done. Um, might be a little bit more uh, dilutive on a fully dilutive basis because you have to offer that full warrant on a bit longer of a time frame to, to sweeten the pot a little bit to get investors to come in. But look, it's not like we're in dire straits here. I mean, uh, gold's at sitting right below 1800, silver's at, at right around 20 bucks. Those aren't horrible prices. Um, I just think it was a really slow summer. The, the precipitous fall in, in stocks across the board sort of gave everybody pause. But, you know, I think wallets start to open back up here in the fall as, as people come to their desks and you'll see financings uh, continue to get done, uh, especially again in, in those critical and energy metal spaces. Like um, I've seen more lithium financings get getting closed and uranium financings than um, maybe precious metals at the current moment. But I do believe that switches in the next, I don't know, call it six to nine months. Yeah, that's a, a pretty, pretty uh, good forecast, I think, for a lot of these guys. So let's uh, let's talk about the show here, Nick. Good to see you here. You're going to drop some knowledge here on uh, on the crowd here. Give us a little preview. 
Well, uh, I'm going to be on several panels and uh, we're going to talk about, I think, some different jurisdictions. We're going to talk about how to uh, invest in silver maybe as a, as a non-primary investment. And, and you know, a lot of people know that, you know, there's not a lot of pure silver plays out there. It's um, mostly mined as a as a, a secondary or a byproduct along with gold or, or polymetallic deposits. So I'll talk a little bit about ways to invest in silver that aren't pure plays. And then um, my talk really is about, I think, staying more grounded in reality. Right. I see a lot of um, and, it, and this is typical in, in the precious metal space with gold bugs and, and particularly silver bugs. But all this, you know, to the moon stuff, silver's going to 50, silver's going to 100, things like that. You got to, you know, stack, stack, stack. I think it's it's um, wise for investors to take some of that with a grain of salt, considering that, um, you know, we haven't been to $50 silver in, in quite some time. And it seemingly struggled to, um, you know, hold hold the $30 level. So I'm trying to introduce uh, maybe not some somberness or sobriety, but just a bit of um, level-headedness into the space because that's how you have to evaluate it. You can't, you know, uh, go into the space thinking that that silver is going to rip to hundred dollars tomorrow. And so, the name of the talk is "To the Moon." Let's start with thirty dollars, and then and, and and we'll take it from there as I get on the stage. Yeah, I think that's uh, probably a good place to start. And uh, I know uh, we've all heard the chats about uh, the, the two hundred dollars silver and the five thousand dollars gold, but I think I think you're right. This is a good place to start. It's a pretty profitable place. I think you tell about everybody's CEO if they could operate in thirty dollars silver. I think they'd Absolutely. probably be okay with that. Absolutely, and and yeah, you gotta you gotta invest in the in the conditions that you're you're given, right? The the right price is the is the last price uh, that the market gives you. So, uh, just investing in these pie in the sky scenarios is is not necessarily a way to go about it. And so, hope to educate your uh, attendees in that respect and, and tell them there's some companies that would be good investments, you know, in the environment that we're in. I mean, after all, that's what we're there for, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll have a, a discount uh, code for you. So uh, some of your subscribers, if they want to partake in here, they can get a little deal here. So uh, Nick, how's, how do people keep keeping track of you? It's um, two ways, really, digestpublishing.com. You'll see all the uh, paid services there. I run several myself. My partner, Gerardo Del Real, runs several. He's specifically focused on the resource market. I'm much more of a generalist. Um, and then dailyprofitcycle.com for uh, all the free editorials we write about the market. Okay. Well, I look forward to seeing you here in a few weeks. And again, you can go to the silversymposium.com to uh, register there. A lot of knowledge uh, to combat this inflation. So uh, Nick Hodge, always appreciate the time. Rob, looking forward to the conference. Thanks again for having me on.